For my eighth birthday in 1946, I was taken to see Annie Get Your Gun with Ethel Merman, and uh, I had never seen anything like that. I felt at home in that, being a member of that audience, being in that theater. I've never got over that. When I was 11, I wrote three plays, because I had seen a bunch of plays. And I called up Newsday and said that there were two boys putting on three plays and give all the money to the orphans of Long Beach. And at the last performance at Portland, I did a story on 11-year-old playwright. Then for my 12th birthday, my parents gave me a royal portable typewriter, and it said a typewriter for our playwright. That was it. That's what told me I could be a playwright. Every day inspires me in New York City. The city's always changing. What you love today surely will not be there tomorrow. Its lack of impermanence is uh, maddening, but something new, always new, pops up again that you didn't know was there. So it's a city of constant surprises. What I love about New York is it doesn't care if you're here or not. It doesn't need you. It will still go on. And that's sort of thrilling. I'd come back to New York to be anonymous and to be rested. I find the city incredibly nourishing. It's not having six degrees back on Broadway that's the greatness. It's having an extraordinary production on Broadway. I think that the issues of the play living in New York are even greater than it was in 1990. The world issues are still the same. Writing, being a playwright, is my job in the theater. I mean, if I couldn't write, I would have found another job in the theater. I'm glad I found this job. Thank you.